What parenting mindset is the absolute worst to go by? My kid's an extension of myself. Fortunately my parents made it very clear that I was expected to find my own identity in life, but some parents get bizarrely attached to the idea of their kid carrying torches for them. I'm 28 and my mom still says crap like we need to find out if he's good enough for you. Excuse me, you don't have to date him. The idea that if you protect them from everything and treat them like a child forever, they will suddenly sprout into this full grown well adjusted adult at 18 and you can just kick them out and expect them to make it. Helicopter parents. Trying to protect their kid from all the dangers in the world. I understand where it comes from. For a few years you are literally the only thing keeping this tiny human alive. Feeding it, changing it, doing everything. Now, all of a sudden it's 16 and wants to play hockey and your brain flips out because all it can think of is potential harm. It's sad because this mindset ultimately comes from a place of love and concern. But in practice, it robs children of so many of best aspects of childhood. It also does a terrible job of preparing them for the real world, where few people will be willing to hold their hand as you have. Treating kids like they aren't human beings with complex emotions and feelings. Not realizing that kids, especially toddlers and preschoolers, feel every emotion that adults do but don't have 30 years of experience learning how to regulate those emotions to prevent disaster, and then punishing them for their lack of self-regulation, like screaming at them for something they can't control because that part of their brain is literally incapable of doing so is just crappy parenting. My friend recently went to her friend's son's birthday party. When she arrived, she was asked why she was asked why she only brought one gift. Apparently the other child, who is younger, gets sad if she doesn't get a birthday gift too even though it isn't her birthday. So when it's one child's birthday, the other child also has to get a gift or they feel left out. Number. Sorry, I grew up with a sister. When it was her birthday, it was her day, not mine. That thought never crossed my mind. That is something the parents have taught them, and it's just going to set that kid up for so much disappointment in the future. This child is an accessory to my lifestyle, not a person that needs to be raised with hopes and dreams. One of my buddies said a child is an investment. Constantly telling your kids that they are smart or gifted and placing them on a pedestal above their peers. From a very early age, toddler, my parents did this to me more for their own pride and ego than for me. I grew up thinking I was smarter than everyone around me and that life would be easy because I was smart. I'm not stupid but I am also not a genius. I wound up never completing college or prospering professionally because I didn't make this realization until my mid-twenties when I had already wasted a lot of opportunity. Being smart doesn't matter when you do not have the discipline to work hard or finish things. Now I have a daughter of my own. Her school says she is gifted but I am very careful not to place too much importance on it or to tell anyone about it if they spend time with her they will see it themselves. I don't want it to be a crutch or a central part of who she thinks she is. Thinking that your kids owe you something. When you take on the responsibility of having a kid, you make a choice. It's your job to house, clothe, feed them, etc. They don't owe you anything in return. No two men are parents that are abusive and hateful towards their kids and gaslight them and think they should put up with the abuse because I raised you and provided for you. Nope. When I moved out my parents actually tried saying I owed 18 years of rent. So that was nice. I have a boyfriend girlfriend now and I choose them over you. Unfortunately, this happens way too much. I've even seen it get to the point where the state tells the parent this person is not safe for your child to live with. Get rid of them or lose your child, and they choose the partner. Yeah, let your kid get bounced around in the foster system because you don't want to be single. It is unfathomable to me how someone could choose anyone over their own child. My sister-in-law did this. My husband and I tried to help our nephew as much as we could, but once the state got involved it was out of our hands. We finally got her to kick him out, but by then it was years later and the damage had been done. We really believe that this is one of the main factors that led up to him hanging himself in the basement at age 19. I was just thinking the other day that if my wife and I were to ever split up, I'd have an impossible time finding, or rather retaining, a new love interest. They'd have to know that no matter what happened, 
they would also be second place behind my daughter. That's got to be really off-putting for most people. Filling every spare minute of the kid's time with activities and lessons. It makes it impossible for the child to find their own hobbies and passions, and keeps them from forming friendships and learning social skills. One of my favorite scenes from Modern Family, a teacher is explaining how kids in the class will have 2 hours of reading homework. The mom goes to the board to add up the total hours needed if every class did this, which means the kids never sleep or eat. In this case, the mom is defending the kids from overbearing teachers who aren't using their time in class efficiently, but same results. This is my second chance to live the life I wanted. No, it's your child's only chance to live the life they want. If it doesn't leave a bruise, it's not abuse. So, emotional and psychological are okay, your elders are always right, respecting your elders is one thing, but if some parents tell you the sky is green, you better agree with them. Sending your child to conversion therapy. Deflecting criticism with, you're not a parent, you wouldn't understand. Look Karen, I'm not a pilot either, but if I see a helicopter upside down in a tree, I know somebody done fricked up. Also your priorities. 1. Be their parent. 2. Be their friend. Your first and foremost duty is to prepare them for adult life. They will dislike some of the things you have to do in order to get them ready. They will pull the I hate you. Tough crap. When I got my first job at 14 my dad started charging me rent. I hated it. It was bulls. It was my money. But looking back it taught me to be responsible. That I had to pay my bills first. Taught me to budget. And is a large part of why I am very financially stable. Also he didn't keep the money. He put it into investment accounts and gave it back to me. With all the growth. When I graduated HS. Dude your dad is low key MVP. The do as I say, not as I do mentality. I think the counter expression is monkey see. Monkey do. You can insist all day long you're superior and the rules don't apply to you you're wrong. But if your kids see you acting that way, they'll do it. Set the example you want them to emulate. Oh god yes, this is really annoying to witness. I don't know how to explain it better, but my parents treat protect me like a 5 year old child and scold me like a 40 years old man. On the protection part, friends don't last or are buttholes, only US will ever really love you. Yes, we know you're not hungry or ate outside but frick you eat this. To be fair though, they sadly spoiled me food wise as a picky eater so much I learned cooking to ease the cooking workload on them both. The privacy? Why the frick do you need that? Why is your room that way? It's part of the house, so it belongs to us. And on the anger part, no right to question their judgement. Gaslighting when I do have genuine arguments, no access to the keys of my own room, no snooping though, I made sure of that, and genuine anger born out of fear. I sadly do understand why they did this, and it did have some good results. No tiger parenting, yet me and my two sisters are highly trained highly educated individuals with multiple degrees yay for free education. It really did a number on our social skills. My sisters are too far gone and are parroting my parents. But frick if I have to go down that rabbit hole. The sole reason I'm still staying is because my family depends on me. I relate to the whole privacy thing. My sister, a year younger than me, has always been extremely nosy towards me since we were little. And she still is. We're both in college BTW. This is why I am such a privacy freak. I'm not hiding anything. I just want my privacy to be respected. My slight social anxiety doesn't help my case. Going through my stuff is a big no-no in my books. I don't have to teach them that. They'll figure it out. Eventually. My ex-wife. Now. My 17 year old son still can't boil water or tie his shoes. When parents think just because they're the parent they should always have the children's respect. They can treat you like a piece of crap all they want. But if you stick up for yourself once you're a disrespectful little brat. I always told my mother it takes respect to get respect. She never understood that. Respect. Always asked for but never given. Anything that involves treating the child as essentially your property instead of a tiny person that is forming their own needs wants. Just because you gave birth to them provide for them support them does not mean you own them. Parenting should be an effort to make that tiny person into someone who will be a good adult. That is kind. 
responsible, empathetic, maybe with a dash of critical thinking skills. That treating your child as property thing, way too close to home. Preemptive punishments got grounded automatically for my teacher calling my house, then congratulated for doing so well, then sent back to my room because they don't want to seem weak for removing said punishment. My kid can do no right. Anything happens automatic punishment. It doesn't that my teacher was fired for being a psycho who can't teach for crap. I'll just give them what they want so they stop crying. Congratulations. You now have a child who's hopped up on sugar that's been trained to cry like a little bee every time it wants something. Put cartoons on and screw around on a laptop all day. And then BSP. It's your own fault that your kid can't talk until they're 5 years old. I have a Facebook friend like this, her son is 2 or 3, and all he does is sit in his high chair and watch movies. She thinks it's so cute and funny, but it's sad, she posts pictures of him in his diaper, just staring at the screen, and usually covered in spaghetti sauce. He has no motor skills and he doesn't talk, oh, but he has a favorite anime. I survived, it was good enough for me it's good enough for them. I'll yell s forward the human race and try to do better every time. Survival doesn't equals good parenting. Believing that fear equals respect. If a kid is afraid to speak their mind in front of you, you aren't doing a good job. You're shutting down any hopes of an open and honest relationship. When your kids talk back to you, respond to them in a civil way. Teach them how to have a proper discussion. If you just yell at them, not only will they not talk to you, they'll start yelling at other people who say things they don't agree with. 3 that never work in my experience as a teacher. 1. My kid is ASB angel and any problems he has are because of you or other kids. That one leads to bad places real fast. 2. Having rules for your kid that you can't follow for yourself. Kids are always watching and consciously or not they will model what you do. You can't tell your kid to act respectfully towards the other kids if that's not how you treat the other adults in your life. 3. Trying to create a mini you. Your kid will take after you in a lot of ways, but will be their own person. Love them for who they are. Don't force them to be what you want. That leads to a lot of shame on the part of the kid, and is much more likely to result in them lying to you than in them becoming who you want them to be. Not being stern with them. I'm not talking about that they can do no wrong but they I see them doing wrong but I don't know how to handle this. My parents had trouble with this with my sibling. Basic decency things and respect are completely gone, and when they try to speak up about it, it becomes a fight, which they promptly back down from. Obviously fighting is wrong but just ignoring problems because you're worried about the backlash from the child is absurd. You're the dang parents they need to respect your authority. The one way you tell a kid to do something without explaining to them why they need to do it, instead of yelling at them to clean their room, show them the value of having a clean, organized room. Show them that by taking the tiny effort to put things back in place they can avoid messing up their room and losing their favorite toys. Assuming kids still have toys that are not daddy's iPad, so they never really have to clean it. Don't be lazy and only show them the what, show them the why. Also, show why that is noticeable within a month or so. Don't give them that you'll thank me in 20 years crap, as if kids can comprehend 20 years in the future. Heck, you 30 40 something parents can't comprehend that you'll understand in your 50s 60s either. Also, raise your kid instead of some idea of what you think a kid is like based on media, stereotypes and parenting books that use generalizations. If your kid has demonstrated a certain degree of intelligence and responsibility, don't treat them like the next door neighbor's kid that still has trouble not sticking silverware in power sockets. And finally there's the one where they force their kids to give their grandma, grandpa, aunt, uncle whatever a kiss before they get to open their birthday present and wonder why their little girl ended up giving that fat Hollywood executive a kiss. And a little more, before they got to play a role in a movie. If you make your kids give transactional kisses, what makes you think they won't do other transactional things with their bodies when they grow up? I kid you not, my nephew has his own iPad. He is 5. Putting them on a pedestal. I know so many girls who have been brought up to believe they're princesses and now as adults they think the same thing. That how dare anyone ever be rude to them. They ain't talk to people however they want. 
They can get everything they want in life without actually doing anything. Bringing a kid up like that is never going to end well. The whole daddy's little monster concept. Pushing your kids to do things most kids aren't doing until next year. Like being the first kid to get the cell phone. New pop artist album. Jewelry. Bra. Pocket knife. Bloody video game. Whatever. Just cool it with trying to get an edge by selling your kid's childhood short. I got everything two years later. I think a big mistake can be assuming that one parenting approach will work for every child. In my experience, children have strong personalities from birth. There are some general rules that you should follow for every child, but it's best to tailor your approach to meet each child's individual needs. Another thing I've noticed is a problem is failing to recognize that your child growing up means that they have changed, and the person they were at 13 can be very different from the person they are at 20. I've seen people alienate themselves from their adult children because they can't seem to see that their child has changed as a person. And not just that they aren't literally a child anymore, but that their likes dislikes. Worldviews and typical behaviors can be very different. Yeah, my father is even surprised that I like mushrooms 15 years later. Such a silly thing. How surprised would he be if he knew all the other stuff? We love each other, so we should have a child. Are you also fit parents? Non-abusive? Financially stable? Patient? Do you like children? In the slightly paraphrased words of Colin, if you think you're not protecting your kids enough, leave them the frick alone. I'm not exactly sure what to call it, hypocrisy maybe? My dad has the I am always right and the rules don't apply to me mindset, so that's where this is stemming from. When I was a kid, my parents told me never to cross the street unless there was a crosswalk. Doing so was called jaywalking and it's illegal. My dad would constantly jaywalk. And when my sister and I would cry and say we don't want to get hit by a car he would yell and scream and threaten to beat us until we did. Then when we got home, we'd be in trouble for jaywalking. I just give them food teach them to be polite to the point where they won't embarrass me and every once in a while give them stuff they ask for to make me feel like I'm a good parent. This is how you get a kid who learned all his values from TV or the internet and only values material possessions because that was the only loving gesture they ever got. I may have overanalyzed my friend's parents. I've seen parents just let their kid cry it out and ignore them during tantrums. Okay, I get it. You don't want to give them attention or else they will keep doing it. But in your own home, that's fine. But out in public or parties, it's terrible to subject others to it. Caring way too much about their sex life. Hate to say it but most older teens are going to have sex with each other. Trying to prevent them from doing it and or judging them for it is only going to push them to do it. It's much better to teach them proper safe sex practices and knowing how to choose actual good partners than trying to stop them from ever doing it. It should be the same for boys and girls. The whole overprotective dad stereotype is ridiculous. Your kids are going to have sex. There is no stopping it. I'm totally fine with ensuring they are not too young. And I'm not saying give them full on opportunities to do it. Just teach them common sense and how to be safe. They'll appreciate that much more. And never judge them if you do find out they did it. Be the person they can come to for comfort and advice. Especially if they didn't have the best experience with it. My parents thankfully taught me well in that regard and I wish all parents did that. I have a friend whose mom won't speak to her because she found out she had sex before marriage. She's 22. Who gives a crap? You can shape a kid to be what you want. Kids will shape your parenting style as much as you will shape your kids. Can't parent every kid the same. Assuming your kid is never right in an argument makes your kid assume he's always wrong in an argument that's precisely why my parents raised a little b. Standing by whatever parenting philosophy you had before you had children, we have good friends who have always believed in permissive, experience based parenting. But they had a kid who is basically Calvin from the comic strip without any of the good stuff. Oh, he's exploring his environment, no, he's breaking my stuff. That style works with some kids, but you need to match your style to the kid you have, not the kid you wanted to have. Parents whose parenting style relies on dominating their child, 
either physically or mentally. Those people never seem to realize that eventually their child will be able to fight back. After the parents have squandered all of their opportunities to build a loving relationship, teach your kids and love them, and take pride in their accomplishments as they become successful young adults. Don't brag about the mind games you play with your 4 year old child. I'll do it later parenting. You know, those half asset promises to build you a tree house in the backyard. It's bound to set your kids expectations to a new low. My dad used to do this constantly. I've been let down so many times by it every time he worked late. It especially hurt my mom when he just wouldn't understand how hard it is to be an actual caring parent. Eventually mom tracked down his credit card purchases to a gentleman's club and she filed for divorce. Best freaking idea she's had. Her new husband is still a workaholic, but he managed to try and care for us way better than dad would. Requiring kids to attend Sunday school and church every week, whether they want to or not, even though the parents themselves never step foot in the place. I'm not going to do anything like my parents did, some extreme situations aside. For the most part parents were like that for a reason and have their kids best interests at heart. I'm thinking of a relative who claimed they weren't going to raise their own kid like they were raised. Their kid had zero discipline and grew up to be a welfare rat who pumps out babies that they are unable to care for. The children had to be taken in by their grandparent, the person who didn't discipline their kid. The stricter I am the better they'll be. My best friend from high school had parents like this. She was. Never allowed out with friends. Cold to clubs after school. Had to have all phone activity monitored at all times. Messages. History. YouTube videos. ETC. She couldn't leave during the weekends even to visit her aunt. She had her door removed for texting a friend past 10pm. I could go on and on. She was never exposed to anything bad. So the moment she moved out she got blackout drunk. Got high on pot. Got a tattoo. Piercings. Lost her virginity to some bug guy. ETC ETC etc. Hiding your kids from the bad things in the world won't protect them from anything. It'll only make them feel like they are missing out and do everything at once. Growing up, I would have loved for my mother to be dependable. Instead when I tried drugs for the first time, I freaked out and stayed at a stranger's. Friend of a friend. House overnight, when I could have called my mom had she been dependable. If you let your kids know that they can trust you when something like this happens, you're not only protecting them better, but you're becoming closer. If they get drunk and know you'll scream at them when they get home, they drive home or to a friend's drunk instead of facing you. Having kid is easy, yet, yeah, I feel like people saying that are crappy parents. Also, maybe not the answer you were looking for but the sense of entitlement of some parents. Like no, your adult child does not owe you to have a relationship with you. If you wanted your grown up kids to stick around you should have been less of a piece of crap. Having kids is easy, you just put a thing in a thing. Move the thing around a bit. 9 months later, boom. Little flesh bag. Raising kids. That's tough. We were picking up my brother in law. He was like 7 at the time, and told him to pack a jacket. He asked why he needed a jacket and before we could say it's going to be cold later, his mother basically shouted do it because they told you to. Um, no, lady, there is a real reason for him needing a jacket and it's important for him to understand how the world works, that is, pack a jacket when it might be cold. Questioning things is how you learn, blindly following orders is how you, well, go blind. His mom is also actually blind but that's beside the point. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.